Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome to a new video and today we are taking a look at the first of the public worlds that will be available when the Fallout Worlds update goes live in September and that is the Happy Builder themed one. So quite a bit to talk about today, quite a lot to get into, so let's jump in! Okay then, so a couple of orders of business before we dive into this one. First and foremost, a little uh, spoiler warning and disclaimer. We are on the PTS today, so we're on the test server. This is unreleased content we're going to be looking at. It could be subject to change between now and its final release. There should not be any story spoilers in this. It's not a story update, so I wouldn't expect anything like that. But if you are concerned about any spoilers, you don't want to see anything before the uh, content comes to the live game, then now is your opportunity to duck out. So, quick overview before we get in. Basically, with this update comes September. The plan is that there will be two major new world types added to the game. So we'll keep Adventure Mode as is, and for those who have Fallout First, Private Worlds will still be a thing as well. For everybody, there will be Public Worlds, which will be basically like Adventure Mode, but separate with their own rule sets and changed um, setup, that sort of thing. So you might have easier building, you might have harder combat, you might have easier combat, various other bits and pieces like that. And that'll be changing on a monthly basis. And for those who have Fallout First, there's the custom worlds, which are sort of the same thing, except you set your own rule sets. So, if you do want to see that in more detail, I've already done a video on all of this, so linked up in the corner, so you can check that one out if you do want to see it. Uh, and so let's get into this. It should be very interesting. So, first thing we need to do is go play. And there we go, Happy Builder. This is the first of the new ones. There's the custom worlds for those who have Fallout first. I haven't picked it up yet, very, very soon, I hope. Uh, regular private adventure mode, and regular adventure mode is over there. So... Max 8 players obviously still in private worlds, that sort of thing. They don't share progress, and I know that's not to everybody's taste and it's frustrated a few people, but basically, if it did, you'd end up with a horrible, horrible uh, pay-to-win situation, which nobody wants. So, um, progress... Kind of, progress comes out of adventure mode into the other modes, but it doesn't go back the other way, is the thing. So, uh, probably the right decision there, not perfect, uh, yeah, but uh, avoiding that pay-to-win thing is definitely a good move, so... Happy Builder. So what have we got down here? It's a limited time one. Um, I should also say these are going to be month-long so worlds, the public worlds, once they go live. But during the PTS they're changing over every week instead so that we can uh, test it out a bit more thoroughly. Uh, but obviously uh, we'll mean I can jump in there every week and produce updates on these new world types for you. So do keep an eye out for those. There should be another one coming in a few days as well because it's due to change over tomorrow. So, Happy Builder. Doesn't share progression. Challenges cannot be completed, so that's score. Um, so, any of that stuff you need to do in Adventure Mode. Surprisingly, it doesn't say a huge amount about the actual setup here, but uh, as I understand it, there should be larger build areas, uh, larger build budgets, closer to what you'd see inside shelters, except for regular camps, and more freedom in camp placement, so you can basically put your camp anywhere on the surface you like, not in enclosed locations or instances, anything like that, but in terms of outside locations, even more, including marked locations, I think, so we'll test that out in a minute. I've got a plan. <laughs> so, Happy Builder. Ah, this is cool. So, world settings. So this is created by Bethesda. It's a public world. More ways to build your favourite things. That's fair enough. I do like these little Vobway icons and stuff. They are very, very cool. Might have to uh, borrow a couple of those. <laughs> so we have a relaxed camp placement. It's partially relaxed. So not anywhere, but a lot more places. Relaxed building restrictions are on. There is no PvP in this particular game mode. And all map locations will start off discovered. So, character progression on public worlds doesn't transfer, doesn't persist after the limited time events. So, you will want to bring your adventure mode character over each time, I think, is the idea. You can kind of copy your adventure mode character into these worlds, you can't do the reverse. So, how do we go about doing that? So, T, that goes the same thing. Uh, well, we'll hit the button and see what happens. Okay then, here we go. So it looks like we are straight into it as if it was a regular world, and it's brought my currently active character, or active at the time, character over from uh, Adventure Mode. So let's go and test this theory out. 
Okay then, so we are in Morgantown, as there are a couple of spots around here I've kind of always wanted to do a build, so I want to test out the features and see whether or not we can do this. So first things first, let's have a look at the uh, somewhat relaxed camp placement. So we'll break out my camp, and would you look at that? Right in the middle of Morgantown, we can already place this and build a camp, more or less, anywhere I want. So that is freaking awesome. So I can't go all the way down this way, apparently. We're towards the edges of town. Uh, I don't know if these creatures have got something to do with this, but let's uh, give them what for and solve that problem. Any more for any more. So it seems to want to let me place there. Once I go further down, it doesn't seem to like it so much. What about if I run all the way down a bit? Further into town I go. Doesn't look like it's going to let me build smack in the middle of Morgan Town, but much closer to the edges, so that's quite cool. Fraternity Row is actually a marked location. It has a map marker and everything. So... Hmm. Don't know why some places are okay and some are not, because this is actually a quest location, this building here, so I'm surprised I can build here. But if I were to toddle over this way a little bit, let's try some of the spots around this side. Because here are definitely some spots you wouldn't have been able to build before, but definitely have some interesting potential. Very, very cool. So that's definitely a lot more relaxed right there. We'll leave that for the moment. Okay, so let's take a little run up this place, because this spot is pretty cool, and I've always thought it would make a great place for a yikes camp. Or for the uh, punji boards, anyway. Hop over those. I'm not going to unlock that for now. This spot is kind of a fortified rooftop on top of Morgantown. There's a few spots like this I've always wanted to build, this being one of them. Some spots over there would be nicer because they're clear, but uh, let's just see if whether or not we can put a camp down here if I wanted to. I could. So I could start here and make this into a proper rooftop camp, add a few extra bits and pieces, that sort of thing. Oh, that's cool. Hmm. So that's an option, cool. Don't think I'm going to do this one right now, but nice to see places like this are actually viable options, which is cool. So let's see if we can find a nice flat roof or something like that to build on. That would be very, very cool. So, I'm up on the rooftop of Morgantown here. It's not too far from where we were before. Just on the outside edge, you see the university over there. I can't get too much further down in this direction. Once we get to the sort of ring road here, you can see down at the bottom, you start getting towards a point where you can't actually place the camp unit anymore. But, in terms of options here... Whoops! I fell off the roof. Oh, well. Um, this spot looks like quite a good possibility. Another spot I did want to wonder about is whether or not we could go onto the roof of the high school, which, being just over here, let's run over and do that. Here we go, Morgantown High School roof, definitely big and open. This might actually be a good spot to experiment with if I can. So let's try it. Look at that. I can plonk this down right on the roof of Morgantown High School and build a um, camp up here, which is pretty handy, or over there from the look of it. On top of the gym would be a really good spot, actually, here. Yeah? yeah, that looks about a reasonable place to put it. Whoa, not sure what happened there. <laughs> I think I hit auto run, actually. Okay. So we are placed. Right. Okay, menu's tidied up. Let's have a, a little look at a couple of things. Obviously, building being less restrictive could mean a lot of different things. So we're going to have to put this to a test and see what's happening. Well, for example, this ain't going to work right now. We can see this already. That's a bit unfortunate. What if I push it over here? So, yeah, apparently that works. Kind of. Okay, that's interesting. So there's probably going to be some sort of things I can't really test here, because I'm definitely not going to think of everything. We can float things, though. So that's always a promising sign. So my guess here is it's going to be comparable to shelters. So let's have a look at some of the walls. Yep, no need to place those. And we can toggle snapping on and off, as you can see in the bottom left there. So if I turn that, it's still snapping to the floor, but it doesn't have to snap to anything else. Which is a bit unfortunate, but okay, that's fine. So I could clearly build something a lot more interesting this way. Actually, there's something I've always had in mind to build. I was tempted to do in the shelters, actually, and might still do. But uh, I could probably do it in a camp now. I might stick with the shelters, though. So that's quite cool. See how it does with collision, if I turn that off. So, yeah, collision is still going to be a thing, apparently. So... We haven't got the option to turn that off here. You do if you've got private worlds, but not, I think, anyway. 
But uh, for now, it looks like we'll have to make do with what we've got. I'll just dump that down and probably hop up here and uh, tweak it a little bit. Get me place to get. There we are. That actually does facilitate something I've had in mind for a while, so that's quite cool. So we know we can float objects. We know we can uh, place things without snapping, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, flying generator if you want one. Let's go with a flying chair, why not? Bit weird, but we can do it if we so desire. Okay, so with most of the basic building restrictions had a general look at now. Obviously there's going to be just about a bajillion questions that I'm never going to manage to answer so hopefully we can conclude that the general idea is that it's basically like building shelters except outside. So I've nipped down to another location that uh, I spotted on the map just before. You see the Somerville Lake down there. And that is this little spot which is called, now I forget, the Pigsty. So this spot's been here for ages and was made a marked location a while ago. It's a blood eagle den. Quite a cool little spot. So having cleared everybody out, turns out, despite being a marked location, I had dropped my camp here and uh, convert this place into my own little camp base type deal with a very, very raider vibe. Which would be quite cool if you're not really into overly building. You have a few extra bits of furniture and you should be good to go. It'd be very, very cool if you're playing a raider, for example. So that's quite fun. However, of course, it's probably worth noting that the enemies will respawn, I would, at least I would expect so, if you uh, build in a location like this, so you're going to have to fight them off from within your camp on a regular basis. But still very, very cool that you can do that. So, I'm going to head somewhere down there, where it's a bit flatter, and we're going to test out a couple of other things. So, uh, wait for a moment. Okay then, so, down the hill a little bit, there are a couple of things I wanted to test out before we uh, wrap this one up. So, one thing that I'm fairly confident you guys will be curious about, if I can find a way to test this, where are you, floors, there we are, is just how high we can build. So, let's go pretty close here. I'll loop. Come on, snapping you yet. Oh, I've got snapping off, that's why it won't snap. There we go. <laughs> nice. So, let's find out just how high we can build. So, let's go over to stairs. Pick these, because we can. And this is something you can do on the live servers now. Since uh, locked and loaded, I believe it was, when they finally fixed this issue. We can now just stack these bad boys up. There we go. That's three for now. I'm going to have to get up there a bit higher so that I can actually uh, see what I'm doing. Right. Come on. Lovely. So there we go. What are we on right now, then? Ouch. <laughs> so, how high have we got? Looks to be about the same as usual. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so I think that's about the normal height on this particular server setting. For those who have the custom worlds via Fallout First, you will actually be able to edit things like the build height, the scale of the build area, things like that. Because if we have a look at this, now that we're actually on the ground, I think the actual build zone is about the same size as usual. Looks to be. So... Nothing much changed there. It's mostly the same kind of restrictions as shelters, basically. You can place things uh, without having to snap them, you don't need foundations, yada yada, that sort of thing. So that's quite cool. So I had hoped to check whether or not we can build closer to other players or not on this server, but uh, the option is not currently available to check, because unfortunately I don't seem to be able to find anybody else's camp. They're not appearing on the map, and the World Activity Tracker will also show you people's camps. It's also not showing anything either, so unfortunately I can't test that. So, on that note, I will wrap this one around about here. It's, as I mentioned before, uh, if you have the custom worlds, I buy a Fallout first, you'll be able to change your own settings, expand the build area, uh, reduce the restrictions even more, I believe. You can even build without using crafting materials, if you like. So, uh, that's definitely a bonus. Once I get that, I will probably be using custom worlds to build more than public worlds. I won't just be doing that, but more often, I suspect, I will. But my plan for that is to change things like weather if I can, and if humanly possible, I'd love to stop the time of day from changing as well. Um, but we will see on that, just so that it's easier to make videos. But what I won't do is change the core settings. 
because um, basically I don't want to lock out anybody who doesn't have Fallout first. That being said, when we get worlds like this popping up, the Happy Builder world, I will probably use those and take advantage of some of the stuff there. So um, obviously everybody will be able to jump in and do that when those worlds are available. So nobody will lose out bar the occasional sort of timing thing. So that's my eventual plan. So obviously I'm not actually able to test every variation, everything in and out, because we're here all day and I guarantee there'll still be things that... Uh, I will miss that somebody will have to ask so hopefully this has given you a little insight into what the happy builder setup is like certainly gives us more freedom in where we place our camps and uh, gives us a little bit more flexibility in the style of building as well sort of like in shelters which is very very cool definitely happy to have that so i do hope you found this interesting and informative if you did please do consider dropping subs and likes for it it's hugely appreciated social media links merch store and channel memberships all available down below the video as well if you're interested in supporting the channel in that way i really appreciate it hugely helps out massive thank you to everyone who's done that already and if you get a chance to join us for the live streams as well we are carrying on of course with fallout 76 and jumping back into mass effect this week as well and i should be playing a little bit of dead by daylight with a few friends on wednesday so if you get the chance to join us for that one and i would expect this to change over either tonight or tomorrow to whatever the next public world theme will be so once that changes over of course i'll be jumping in there testing that out and uh, giving you a little preview of that as well so do watch out for that one and notification bell is of course your friend on this one so for now thank you very much for watching and i look forward to speaking to you all very very soon